I agree that if I put more efforts on chess, I could be stronger. Maybe one day I could break two thousand seven hundred, or even I could be top fifty or top even forty thirty. I don't think that's impossible, to be honest. But for me, no. I thought life shouldn't be like that. Otherwise, it would be like a machine, a chess machine. The Feeder Commission for Women's Chess in cooperation with Chess Twenty Four seeks your donations to help our Ukrainian chess players and their families affected by the ongoing war in Ukraine. If you want to donate, please find the link in the description below or on the Feeder webpage. Hey everyone, and welcome back to our third episode of our Year of Women in Chess podcast series. Today's guest is a grandmaster with a current rating of 2,658, ranking number 83 in the world. She's a four-time world, women's world chess champion and the second highest rated female player of all time. Besides being a world-class chess player, she studied international relations in Peking University and public policy at the University of Oxford. And in 2020, at the age of just 26, became the youngest ever professor appointed at Shenzhen University. I'm very happy and honored to welcome today's guest, Hui Fan. Welcome, Yi Fan.、Uh, hello, hi everyone. It's my honor to join this podcast. Well, we're very glad to have you here. First of all, Yi Fan, let me start off by wishing you a happy belated Lunar New Year. Did you, besides probably still, even though there are still some Corona restrictions in place in China, still manage to celebrate a little bit with your family and friends? Yeah, thank you. I mean, it's not late at all because we, I, you know, we started the New Year the day before yesterday. Yeah, like the first of February this year. So, uh, we're still on holiday, and this year we're going to have like a week holiday. And as you mentioned, yes, I spent the festival with my family. Uh, though, I mean, yeah, due to this uh, uh, COVID situation, we're. In Shenzhen, so our plan was probably like let's say, uh, go back to hometown and so on. But、uh, since Shenzhen had few new cases, um, exactly in the um thirty first of January, so that somehow changed our plan. That is quite unfortunate, but at least your family is there, and I guess you can still celebrate together a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so let's get straight into the chess, actually, because we're just having a one-hour podcast, and considering the huge amounts of tournaments you won and the successes you had, it's actually a really short time. So you are currently still the strongest woman in the world. Yet since two thousand eighteen, you actually participated in very few tournaments. But I did see that you made a semi-recent reappearance in the Chess Super League in twenty twenty-one. Which is a tournament organized online where you competed for the quintessential queens. How was it to play such a strong tournament again? And how do you generally feel about playing chess online? Uh, so the event you are mentioning is this. Uh, uh we call it like a super chess league. Is that one? Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So actually, that is not the only one, and I guess not the most important event that I participated last year, and also not the last one because coincidentally in China we had a kind of, uh, uh let's say paired events just happened before the festival. Let let's say twenty ninth and thirtieth of January this year. Yeah. So that 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 was the last one, but of course the one you mentioned it's a very interesting event because the format is new. And the, the organizer is trying to、um, invite players from different countries with different gender, from different age, and they're trying to do a great、uh, mix up. So I thought the format is great, and clearly it attracted a lot of attention. So、uh, I was very happy to be invited and participate in that one. Although the performance of myself and my team didn't go very well, but I guess、um, it's in general a great event to trying to promote the,、uh, let's say, online chess, trying to attract more people and bring some interesting games to all chess fans around the world. And apart from this one, actually last year I played the online Olympiad organized by Fede and represented China.、Um, we 
we got an improvement compared to the year before. Let's say twenty twenty, but um, unfortunately, we didn't manage to let's say uh going to the final. So that leaves some some room to improve the next year. And apart from this event, I also participated a couple of events organized by Chess dot com. Let's say this uh, uh speed chess and uh, also some other events, let's say, online or even offline that happen in China. Yeah, by the way, uh, last year we got an important one called um, National Games. So I was participating in that one and the one event. So I guess that is somehow, um, how to say, important for the athletes in China. But for me, basically, you know, you say that now I'm not only focusing on chess, let's say, um, Participating events as a player is not the only and the highest priority, but I still、um, cherish every single chance, every single opportunity that I could put myself into chess as a player. Do you actually feel that this chance of of playing online is, is a good option for you, while you still have another job on the side to participate in like very high class tournaments without, like, for example, traveling so much? Or are you actually very much looking forward to over the board chess properly starting off again after the pandemic? Well, it is very hard to say. So personally,、um, let's say if taking if do not consider my own situation, I would prefer the face to face events, and I thought that's、uh, let's say more important for serious chess because we all know that online events. On one hand, it promotes chess. It gives chess players more opportunities to、um, play games and showing chess fans、uh, what happened the latest and an interesting battle. But、um, somehow, it cannot demonstrate the highest chess level if we're only organizing the online events. So that's to say, the OTB events is necessary. But unfortunately, due to the global Climate. Let's say these couple of years we cannot organize as much offline events as the previous years. So I'm very happy that in chess, the FedE, the organizers,、uh, and the chess clubs, the platforms, we are trying to do a great job to collaborate with each other and come up with a lot of new events, interesting formats, trying to、uh, keep chess going on as much as possible. So that also shows. You know the privilege of chess. That means almost every format of events, the different、uh, time control could be happened online. Yeah. Okay. So back to your question. Personally, of course, I thought it even works better for me because let's assume if nowadays it's still like most of the events happened,、um, let's say、um, offline. Due to my current job and other stuffs I'm doing, it's very hard that I could travel,、um, even as half as I did in the past years when I was、uh, basically a full,、uh, let's say, a professional chess player. So that's different. That's very hard.、Um, but in general, I I think that if one day there are more chances to play some、um, face to face events, I would be very happy to consider. Yeah, I think it's it's interesting times for chess because, as you said, like we're we're quite lucky compared to other sports that we can so easily go online and change formats. And it's going to be interesting to see what sticks around and also maybe what gets established in terms of like hybrid formats and stuff, because I do think they all have advantages. Just to add,、uh, online chess, it's it not. I mean, it does not equals to、uh, offline chess. So. To say it's, it's different chess, so、uh, that is my point of view. No matter we see how、uh, how good we did while doing the online chess events, but it's different. The two minutes completely different. So, for example,、uh, could we try to imagine? Let's say、uh, we put the world championship match, or even candidates or Grand Prix, moving all these important events online. No, that's impossible. I mean, for for blitz, probably it's possible, but if we're talking about the classical time control, it's very hard. So it's still like the different thing. So I'm mainly taking this、um, online chess from a promotional perspective, but not a professional perspective. 
Yeah, I think that's that's a common view. I think they're more like complementing formats. So I don't I don't think online chess will like kind of wipe out the over the board, but it's it's a nice additional opportunity. Um, so maybe we can go back a bit into the past. Um, so basically, in two thousand three, you won your first international tournament when you finished in the girls under ten section in the World Youth uh, Championship, and then a few years later in two thousand eight. You, I think you were just aged 14. You then competed in the Open World Junior Chess Ch Championship, being the only girl there. And kind of looking at how you changed between different age classes and Open and female tournaments, I wondered how did you or your coach or family make the decisions on what to play? Mm, well, I think... There was no particular point. Let's say, uh, we were trying to make a serious decision. Let's say what to play. So it's more like a natural process. So for example, you mentioned, uh, I played the let's say World Youth Championship when I was nine years old. So at that time, I played under my age group with the gender with a uh, let's say, uh, with the girl section. So that's exactly my group, right? Uh, but I won it quite smoothly. So later on next year, so basically, uh, we just came up with the idea, let's say probably we should try to challenge more. At that time, challenge more means two options, right? Either you play a, an elder gr age group or you play in the open section. So we decided to just try to uh, play the open section. And in that at that time, I play, I got, let's say, um, I got the... I got to share the first place, but this tiebreak points were lo lower. So that, on the other hand, also shows that uh, I was kind of in the strength to compete with the best, uh, okay, many boys in my age group. So that even gives me more confidence to work harder and maybe try to challenge myself with a stronger chess player. So that is not because that we, we seriously think about, okay, which age group to choose or maybe uh, which open... Uh, which section to choose is basically first evaluate your own strengths and based on your own strengths trying to figure out so uh, which group is more challenge to yourself and could try to um, help improving the playing skills so that's basically the only thing at least I thought I care about and also my family cares about and also uh, coaches are very supportive in this perspective. They didn't say, okay, so you have to play your group in case you wanted to uh, win the medals. No, they never say something like that. They also thought, okay, so you should try to uh, try best to try to uh, improve and showing the great performance at all. Okay, so it was, it was mostly a decision to find basically the tournaments which would challenge you most and help you most to grow. That is that's very interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't only try to uh, highlight the resort as the sole factor while we were choosing these chess events. But on the other hand, I, I was trying to recall those years because, um, let's say, the, the event is not as much as nowadays. I'm saying now it is not, you know, under pandemic, but a few years ago, there were a lot of events, open tournaments, and people can travel easily across the country trying to play the events. No, back to that time, I remember that as a Chinese, when we uh, travel abroad to play events, we need to apply for visa, right? Because mm. most of the events were held in Europe countries. And every time the visa only gives to certain days that to support only this event. And in around 2006 to 2008 so sometimes i was just let's say for example in hungary i play one events okay then go back to china the same day apply for another Schengen visa and the next day fly to france so things like that so it's actually uh not so easy to travel abroad playing events but uh since there are limited options so to me i felt like um, let's say very cherished for every potential event I could play myself. Therefore, of course, you wanted to choose those that can uh, practice yourself more. Yeah, it, it's something we kind of forget, especially as viewers when we're not playing so many high-class tournaments ourselves, but we just see the top players play in these events and we kind of forget that they have to do the same things that everyone else of us have to do, like apply for visas, do these kind of things. But it, it's true that it's probably not so easy coming from a lot of countries. 
Yeah, let's let's move on a bit in time. Um, so in 2010, you actually became Women's World Chess Champion for the first time, winning the final round in the knockout system 5-3 to three against Ran Lufay. Can you maybe talk us a little bit through the tournament, how you remember it? Were there any memorable games? How do you feel like you handled the pressure? Uh, well, that seems to me like a very old story. So I was trying to recall, you know. Uh, of course, that is a very important event in my chess career. I wouldn't say that uh, become a world champion is my um, professional goal, but at least it's a, uh, it's a step that I want to one day it could come true. So uh, I came to this tournament. I remember that was in Turkey. Yeah, in 2010 in Turkey. I came to the tournament, of course, with some expectations because two years ago, I already uh, became a runner-up. So I, I, I went to the final, but unfortunately, I didn't manage to uh, win the final, right? So of course, then the next year, I mean, the next edition, two years later, I hope that I could uh, move even further, but you know, it's a knockout system. So there are more unexpected things might happen. There are more uncertainty. Although with one of the writing favorites, I didn't really tell myself, let's say you have to win the tournament, you know, or even breaking the record. No, I don't take that so seriously. I just hope that, okay. So um, step by step, I could try to go further, right? Uh, and I remember there were a few critical moments in that tournament. I passed the first two rounds without too many, let's say, up and downs. But in round three, I faced one of my uh, teammates. She was also a former world champion, uh, Zhu Chen. Yeah, she, she's she's now working at Fade Day, so as a treasure. Yeah, uh, so I, I faced her in, I think, round three. Yeah, so I won my first game with white pieces, but somehow she played super well in the second game with white pieces. I remember we played this uh, uh, name zone defense. Yeah, she got a great home preparation. And somehow right from the opening, I faced some pressure and I got a worse position. And my opponent played accurately trying to keep this advantage until the end and convert it in a into a full point. So after losing that game, I feel like, um, okay, so the situation could be a little tricky. I'm not saying that, okay, I lose a confidence or whatever, but I realized, you know, there is a tiebreak, the first tiebreak in this event, but it doesn't really, let's say, um, influence my emotions a lot. I just try to be um, smooth and um, Playing the tiebreak with a regular mindset. I mean, I didn't say, okay, I have to win back or otherwise this would be the end of the day. No, no, no. Because I felt like my opponent actually had a very good home preparation for that event and she played well. So I thought, okay, so let's just play some chess. So luckily I won the tiebreak with um, with uh, with a smooth performance. And then I moved forward and... Uh, the next critical moments going to the quarterfinal. I think it's quarterfinal. I'm not so sure. Okay, but my opponent was Katya Nagno. She is also one of the uh, top female players, and she also became a super strong at a very young age. And I remember the first game. Yeah, the first game I was black pieces, and she. She chose Alabin defense against my Sicilian. At the time, I played almost all, um, all Sicilian with black pieces. Okay, so um, she's not hard to prepare something. Okay, she prepared a specific line, and there was a trap waiting for me. And unfortunately, I went to that trap. But of course, she didn't knew that she didn't know that as well. And during the game, if she found a good move with an accurate move order, I think I will lose some material. That means the game would be more or less hopeless. But luckily that she didn't find that. That, that was relatively hidden. So uh, then the game continues with equal chances. But I guess probably she also felt like, okay, she got a better position. She had an extra pawn. So she is trying to put pressure and trying to win that game. And somehow around the 
around the move forty, let's say roughly around the first time control and second time control, she made a few inaccurate moves that would allow the advantages. Disappeared, and she's still trying to put some pressure. And later on, I, I, I got some good chances to fight back and trying to win that game with black pieces. And after that, almost this mini match is over. So after these two critical moments, of course, the game then continued with the semi final and the final. And you know, when the event goes to that point of view, of course, um, it's more. How to say, not not to say exciting, but it's combining the exciting and a bit nervous, right?、Mm-hmm. And in the semi final, I faced my opponent, kind of I faced many times, Helmi Kalan from India, and we faced each other two years ago in the semi final because we always got the same starting number according、mm-hmm. to the rating. Yeah, and I think I played well, so I won that match without too many. Difficulties. I mean, of course, the game process has a has a, let's say key moments. But if we're looking from the resort, it's、uh, it's like no tie break, so more more or less smoothly. And then the tournament goes to the final. And、uh, first of all, we're happy because、uh, I face with my teammates. Therefore, that means that China will have. Uh, let's say, well, win this event anyhow. So that, in some case, released my pressure, right? But still, you know,、uh, then we need to talk、um, personally. I'm still trying to、uh, win this match. And the first three, I remember after first three classical games, the the score were two. Uh, two versus one, right? So I got let's say one point ahead, and that means the final game only needed to be a draw. Okay, so I got black pieces, but unfortunately, again, my opponent prepared super well, and I got a worse position right from the beginning again, and I lose that game. Yeah, I lost that game. That means the situation goes to the starting point again.、Mm. So I remember that night was somehow more like.、Mm, Emotional to me compared to the、uh, previous days. So previous days, although I talked, like, let's say there are some critical moments, but、uh, the first thing is I was not that close to win the event, right? So your mindset is more stable. And second thing is that didn't feel like my advantage is that huge. The goal is never that close. So that also helps me to be a bit calm down. But during that night,、um, talking about the. The match progress and how I managed my terrible last game. I felt like,、oh, well, it's not the matter of trust skills; it's the matter of mindset. So I was very lucky that、um, back to、uh, let's say、um, back to that time, I got my coaches with me. I got my mom with me, and also a friend who is actually the club leader. Uh, of the team that I played for almost a decade back to then, so they were all there, and、uh, they were trying not only to help with me with some technical preparation, but mainly likely trying to help me relax and、uh, be ready for the next day as a new start. So I think that's the most important thing for me. I still remember that after the dinner, we walked outside in the garden. Just near the hotel where we were living and playing, and、uh, my team were trying to, you know, share it with me. Not the story that they compete with chess, but some unrelated stories with jokes, whatever. Just people are having fun, and sooner or later, I realized, well, it's just a tournament, right? So it's not the entire career for me. And according to the games I've played, the performance in that event, I have the, let's say, the skills to,、um, to show the good performance. That's all I need to know. So I slept well, and next day I came to the venue, feel like refreshed and、um, not nervous. Yes. So in the tiebreak, I sh- I thought like I played the, quite some good games, and the. Score was also also went very well.
yeah. I think that's thanks so much for giving us like a bit of an insight into the tournament. It, it's super fascinating to see how how you deal with pressure. Um, I think most people would have absolutely cracked in that situation, and you somehow managed to calm down yourself in just one evening, and then win that tournament. So absolutely amazing. Yeah, I feel that like that is、um, the thing that chess taught me, or let's say, uh, chess helped me to be more tougher and more stronger in one thing. It's not like you read a couple of books and or you talk with friends with the manners you could become like that. It it should be let's say you experience something, right? It could be something in your career, something in your studies, or even something in your life. So I thought I was lucky. It's through chess games I could learn that because chess games, you know, if we talk about it's just games that happen over the chessboard. It does not hurt your life. It does not hurt your career. It's the especially not hurt your, let's say the 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 gen more general and more important things. Although chess is important, but you know what I talk about. Even if you lose this time, you have the next chance. There always be some ch- chances waiting you to to fight, right? Yeah, we actually discussed this in our first podcast episode with Yana Krivak because she actually wrote a whole book about this called "Improve Your Life by Playing a Game," where where she talks exactly about these things.、Um, so it seems to be like something that a lot of people can draw life lessons from.、Um, Let's get on to my next question. I guess, like having won the 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 first world women's championship for yourself, as you said, it wasn't like your your only goal, but clearly it must have been something. And do you feel like anything changed for you after, in terms of like you ticked one really big goal off, or for example, also I guess you went from from being the person challenging that title to being a person defending that title. Mm, not really. I don't think there's a lot of change, especially if we're talking about chess wise. Because,、um, let's say I keep playing the tournaments.、Uh, I, I mean, I keep playing as much events as previously, and of course, I I got more invitation. That's true, by the way. Yeah, that's one thing. I got more invitation. But even I wanted to say before I won the first title. I already got a couple of very good invitational chances. For example, why can't say okay now Tata still yeah.、Uh, I got invited to this、uh, super easy event the first time back to two thousand seven, and until now I played at least like seven or eight times that event. So that really is a, a unique chance for me in my chess career. If we're talking about let's say.、Um, Important events that help me to improve my chess skills. So that's one thing. And the other thing, of course, after I won the title, there suddenly there was more attention. There were more interviews, especially within that year. I mean, within a year, let's say 2010 or 2011. And、uh, you need to learn. You need to deal with some new things. For example, how to balance your Training time, competing events, and also、um, these、uh, um, interviews or promoting chess, this kind of things. Especially next year in two thousand twelve, I went to into well went into university, and that even you know one more thing came to life. So the time management became even more important. And、uh, apart from all these external things, which you can obviously observed. You know, the inner side is more or less the same because,、uh, as we mentioned before, it's just a career step, not like the, not like the entire goal. So it does not really change myself. Thought about okay, so maybe that's the, that's what I wanted to achieve in chess world. Now I should do something else. Or okay, um, this、uh, really means a lot. So now I should try to defend the title. No. I I never had any idea like that because to me, even back to that time, the most important tournaments is not the World Championship. I mean, it's it's. I'm not saying that the World Championship is not important, but I mainly consider it as a as an event that a professional chess player should play, should try to fight for the title. And but it doesn't mean that this is the tournament I wanted to. Mm. Show myself, show show the best performance. No, that is not the only event. So, at that time, I already thought that、um, 
I was eager to participate more top events to challenge challenge myself and also to improve myself to see how far I could achieve in the chess world. So, whether let's say defending the title or challenging for the title, and I never approaching things in that perspective. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So, so if you say so, the world championship for you is like one tournament in in many, and it's not so much about the titles. It seems. Is there like a, for example, a game you you played which you think is your best game, or which is which you can like a tournament which you consider your strongest tournament? Uh, they were. They were, they were few. I was trying to figure out. Okay, uh, so of course one of the events I that came to my mind should be, uh, the two thousand twelve Gibraltar. Yeah, two thousand twelve Gibraltar because I think I played some good games in that event, and also my tournament performance were one of the highest in my chess career, and I almost won the event. So the only pity thing is that I didn't perform very well in the tiebreak with Nigel Short, which you know in the first tiebreak game when I was having black pieces, I still remember that was a French and I no 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 that was a Sicilian yeah that was a Sicilian sorry the second game was French yeah so I simply missed the chance that I could want a piece so that is a great pity. Apart from that, the classical games I play in that event is is very well and the most of the term. Most of the opponents I faced were almost、uh, in the top level. So apart from this event, there were there were other few events. Let's say like、uh, one of the Tata Steel and one of the Green Key Invitational events. I played very good in the first half, and somehow you know the second half. It became another person playing the event, so I wouldn't say in general I was super satisfied with the performance. But if we only take part of it, let's say the first half, it's it went also very well, and、uh, and there were other few open events and also uh world world championship and world team championship. I thought I did in general good performance, but that is not only taking account the. Mm, the performance, but also the importance of the tournament itself. You know what I mean, right? Yeah, that makes sense. There are just like some very big invitational tournaments, which I guess to every professional chess player, like the dream and like an absolute challenge to play.、Mm-hmm. Yeah.、Um, let's follow up with a question about the world championship again, because you're actually after winning the world championship four times, the women's, you then decided not to play anymore. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I wanted to ask if you explain us a little bit your rationale behind this.、Mm, yeah, let me try to、um, figure this out because that already quite some time, almost、uh, six five years or six years ago. But of course, I think I made that decision is because I felt like there should be some.、Uh, Improvements or let's say changes in the、uh, women's world chess championship system. So considering that back to then the system between the open section and the women's section is completely different,、um, and also I felt like、um, at the the previous version that uh, uh, for example when you Win the match. You need to start、uh, from the scratch, playing this knockout system again, in case to defend the title. And once you defend the title, that as the winner of the knockout system, which we call it now the World Cup, you have the rights to wait for the challenger, which is actually the winner from the overall Grand Prix standings to challenge you. I mean, all this sounds a bit,、um, you know, sounds a bit.、Uh, Differences sounds that is something could be improved. So at the time, my my first and the most straightforward、uh, concern is why we cannot have the same system as open section. Yeah. So for you, the ideal modus would be the same for the women's as for the male competition, like the women's and the open competition, basically. Yeah, exactly. So I felt like that's more reasonable because、uh, once you win the match, you have the rights to wait for the challenger, 
and the challenger should be qualified, let's say, from candidates event, and the candidates should be qualified by, let's say, World Cup Grand Prix writing and from all different sources. I feel that that is more like well organized. But back to then, in women's section, you see the World Cup winner will become the world champion. So World Cup nowadays is just the way to qualify for candidates. You already see there is a huge difference, right? And also back to then, the system would ask the world champion to play every year the the world championship circle tournaments like knockout or match. So I felt like that's that's too much.、Hmm. And also, if we're looking from the history of chess, all the most influential、um, championship tournaments were organized by matches. Let's say 1972, right?、Uh, Bobby、uh, no Bobby Fischer versus、uh, Boris Baski and 1985 Kasparov versus Karbov, right? And and not not to mention all these recently Magnus matches. So all these were happened in the match format. So I feel like that should be the that should be the one that demonstrates the highest professional level of chess. And also, I thought it's good for promoting chess because this could create more. Uh, high quality chess games, and also showing not the player strengths and also the home preparation behind that and things so on. That doesn't to say that we should take out the other formats, as you see. As you see now, the 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 other formats could be put into the right place to take in the right role as a part of the World Championship circle. So actually, I had this、um, idea already a long time, at least.、Uh, One or two years before I officially,、um, you know, expressed or let's say,、uh, officially writing to Fede back to that. But at that time, I was just like talking personally, let's say, or friendly、um, at the official platform because I felt like okay, maybe one day they're going to change. But sooner or later, I see that there are always some、um, some problems. Which I understand is also the real difficulties that this system did not be generated or updated. So after I won the match in 2016, I feel like it's probably the moment that I should do something, not only for myself but also for this entire,、uh, let's say, women's chess. I was thinking if I did not,、uh, let's say, stand up to say something, maybe this system would just be like that. And、uh, if we just wait until one day the, let's say, the federation would realize and change that, probably that takes more time because you know, as a, a as an international organization, Fed has a lot of things. We have the, you know,、uh, Fed has different, let's say. Uh, commissions which taking different role, and they are not only pay attention to the professional chess, the open section, the women section. They also are taking the role to promote chess, chess into school, and、uh, promoting train. I mean,、um, support trainers. This all different things. So I believe there must be a kind of different category with a priority list, right? So which things to take first? It's hard to say. So I feel like. Probably, if、uh, I say something, that could bring more attention. Trying to、uh, help the improvements for the system, so that's the reason I decided to do that. And as we all know, what happened next? Um, actually, very soon, right? I think just two years. Then the system is changed. So talking about this,、uh, I really want to thank the current.、Uh, Mm, let's say、uh, the current、uh, management board of Fede that taking this thing as the、um, clear priority to、uh, improve the woman system in general. Although the only pity thing is back to then I lose the、uh, personal chance to let's say back to this circle because I already you know not in the system and also studying at Oxford. So personally, it's not a、uh, Kind of a good thing, but in general, as a chess people, I felt like it. I felt like very happy that it could happen one day, and I actually helped to make these things happen. That was very interesting insight. Thanks for sharing, and、um, yeah, it's 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 great that you're happy with the changes that were made. 
Um, maybe moving a bit away from the the championships, uh, a bit of a more more personal question. I think what what makes you stand out from other players quite a lot is that you very often or not very often, but you every now and then state that for you chess is, is a game, and you know that there's other important things in life like friends or family or, or love or whatever. And I feel that's that's quite a, a statement that when people are really successful, whether in sport or a profession, it often seems like they dedicate their whole life to this. How how did you manage to keep that attitude while still being so successful? And do you feel that's something you still have as an attitude, even though you now have a, a job as a professor that must be very busy as well? Oh, uh, well, yeah, I also felt like, uh, you know, many of my friends in chess and other career, not only sports, sports field, but other field, they, the best people, they kind of fully devote themselves and fully devote their passion into the thing they love and they, they're doing, right? So in this sense, I also felt like I'm a bit uh, different. But also there are some people who are trying to combine different things well, very well. So uh, back to my case, I felt like, first of all, it was something born in nature, uh, born in nature and it highly relates with my um, family environment that you know what they told me and how I felt when I grew up in my very early age so I felt like my 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 personality is like okay so I wanted to do my best in the thing I do but that is that shouldn't be the only thing in my life and I my life should not only surrounding this thing that means for example I'm giving example so one of my friend who who is also a uh, an athlete she told me that okay so the books I read the exercise I do and also the even for example like the um, eating habits should be the one that benefits my professional career or let's say if some of the tutors or mentors say this would be good for your career I should do that because you felt like it could improve. But for me, no, it's never the case. So my, let's say, my reading preference, let's say the food I like, the exercise I want to do, it should be all follow my heart. Let's say the thing I like, the thing I wanted to do, I thought that spending time on it is worthy. So I will do that. Otherwise, if even if you only told me it's good for your chest, I said, no, but I don't need yeah. that. Or even I realized, you know, maybe some it could be helpful. But I thought life shouldn't be like that. Otherwise, it would be like a machine, a chess machine. You know, you want to be the best, the strongest. So what? I feel like even one day like that, I feel like the life is not full. It's somehow something has been missed. So I wanted to highlight or try to experience those more, um, how to say it in English, I was just trying to say. So something more natural, something more like uh, highly connected with the person itself. So more like literature, literary, this kind of things, but not only, let's say, chess, the best the most accurate no i don't judge word in that way i see things more like a colorful way with uh, with uh, with um how to say we with we say like with degrees or with uh temperatures i don't know how to say exactly just like the the world should not only be um the one with the uh, with accuracy with right and wrong things no I want to. I want to prefer the other way, and also that I felt like um, uh, every time when I made decision, I was trying to see. Okay, so if you choose this, you would of course lose some of the other part. Would you be regretful that if you felt like okay, if I didn't do that, I felt like it's super pity. I would be regretful that then keep that in right. So for example. I was sometimes also asking myself, would you feel like very pity that you spend some time on other fields which caused the, you cannot be stronger, cannot be a stronger chess player? I, I agree that if I put if I put more efforts on chess as some of the other professional chess players, I could be stronger. Maybe one day I could break 2,700 or even I could be top 50 or top even 40, 30. I don't think that's impossible, to be honest. But, you know, 
I hope that I want to achieve that. But if the precondition is I need to sacrifice all the other things, um, let's say, um, let's say studies, the time you spend on your interests, I feel like um, no, I would be regret for that because when you at your twenties to do something compared to when you at the fifties at your fifties to do something, it's not the same thing. So therefore. I realized that、uh, um, there should be、um, pros and cons for every of your decisions. So just follow your heart. I, I very much ad- admire that mindset you have, and and I think it's very inspirational to see that that you you live like that, and and you still manage to be incredibly successful, but still have a life. There there is so much more in there, and that makes you so happy. Um, one of one of the occasions when I guess you decided to to follow your heart or your interest is that you decided to continue studying and went to university,、um, which ended up in in you being in 2020 appointed a professor at Shenzhen University、uh, in the School of Physical Education.、Um, so. What what do you do there for a job now exactly? Is this at all connected to chess, or is this fully like international relation focused? Uh, it is mainly connects with chess at the moment. So my the courses I, the courses I, I give is、um, about the professional chess because all the students, uh, that. Uh, In the university, are having decent chess skills, so they need to become certain level in case to be a student at Shenzhen University under this major. So the course I taught is more close to a professional level. Apart from that, I also have a few projects that、uh, launched by school, which is trying to promote chess or trying to. Um, explore a study method for chess. This kind of thing, so we call it like a revolutional teaching projects. And apart from that, recently I also did some administrative works, not related with chess. It's more like a general sports field, and also some service works. So that that is.、Uh, More like general and broad, yeah, and also I mean, charging of the、um, team building because in the university we wanted to create or build or train a professional sports team, which also includes chess team. So I'm also working on that part and also. Taking charge for organizing some events or doing some、uh, public. Uh, public relations things. Let, let's say、um, promoting chess or promoting the、um, the sports influence in the campus and outside of campus, in national or international. So that is something in long term. It's not something we said. Okay, we do that. We can do. It's basically you think about what would be the. Specialty in your university, which should be the preference we want to achieve in the next couple of years. According to that plan, we'll see. Okay, so what t- kind of institutions or organizations or whatever we want to collaborate with in case to、uh, promote the influence. But all these are something additional. The fundamental thing for me is lectures. Uh, is to see how to. Cultivate the students, and what is the goal? So, for example, helping them to become a strong chess player, helping them to、uh, become a decent graduate who just loves chess, but using chess to find his or her real passion in other fields, and how to、um, help them find the. Uh, the study method that suits them the most. I guess that's the most important thing. It's not the skills I taught to students, but the method to them, like how to study. I guess that's also nowadays. Especially, I found that the students here I taught they would be benefit from and what they really learn because the knowledge is unlimited, right? We cannot tell them all we know or even something we don't know. We also need to learn ourselves. So it's basically about more general things. 
Can I follow up to clarify, because this idea of chess at the university is very interesting, but it's also something I'm not very familiar with. So the students you're teaching, their their main focus is chess, or they have another degree and they do the chess kind of on a scholarship, uh, similar than like in a US university, I guess, where, where, where different sports are done on the side? Well... I some system I don't know very well, like you said, the chess scholarship in US universities because uh I, I heard something but not knowing the details, so I will just try to come up with our situation. So let's say the students I taught they they came under the um, sports training major. And the sports training major was under the normal, let's say, we call it education degree. But now we had some huge changes in the university and the uh, the education department doesn't exist anymore and we became a new sports department. But I'm not so sure what they will get in their degree. But their major is sports training, which means in Chinese universities, if you're in this major, there are some... Um, there are some fundamental courses that you have to study, let's say like those sports biological things, these courses, and those sports cultural things. And that is somehow the fundamental courses. And apart from that, there's another part which calls your sports specialty. So, for example, if a student is coming to the university, since they play very good basketball, they will then their sports specialty would be basketball. So uh, the students here I'm teaching is because their specialty is chess. So chess is also the part of the fundamental course, but this part is different if they came from different sports. And apart from these fundamental courses, they also have selected selective courses, which is the same with other majors. Let's say the same with law students, with um with uh, economic students or things like that. So they can choose any courses they like, they're interested. Uh, so basically, it's still like, uh, mm, let's say, the campus, the, the, campus stu- the, the college studies is not only focusing on chess. Therefore, I say the, in, my previous, uh, in my previous answers that they actually have the uh, rise, they have the possibility to choose. After the graduation, they want to become a strong chess player, a strong coach, or maybe even they could cross to other fields. It's all possible. That is very cool to have like a degree where you can like be in the sports in general, but it's also very chess-centric if you want to make it. Can I ask, what is the general popularity of chess in, in China? Is it something you would say is very popular? That Do you, for, for example, sometimes get recognized on the street by people? Uh, well, it depends on the location where I am. So, for example, if I'm in my hometown, which is located in the south part of China, uh, it's called Xinhua. Yes, I mean, most of the people would recognize me. So most of them even heard my name and some of them may recognize me. You know, I felt like my name is more well known than my than my face. Okay. So that's a good thing because then I can, you know, just uh, go out as a, as anybody, right? So I like this way. I don't want, you know, people can recognize me so easily, but because then you probably have some uh, restrictions when you travel out, out right? Uh, and... Uh, also, for example, when I was in Beijing, I was in our national team because that area, that region, um, gathered a lot of athletes, professional athletes, uh, Olympic sports, non-Olympic sports. So in that area, there are more people tend to recognize you. Or let's say in some province, some cities that um, just developed very well, so people sometimes could recognize me. Uh, but that is... Uh, not very, very often to see in China. So uh, back to your question, the popularity in chess is, um, let's say, is improved compared to decades ago. But I believe that the there are still potentials to become one more popular. I see there is a huge room in this perspective. So nowadays the situation is like the younger generation, um, let's say, uh, that the parents were born after 80s, they would be 
Uh, they have a high credits on chess. They want their children to learn chess. But if we're talking about the parents after fifties or sixties, or let's say in these elder generation, their、um, recognition on chess is not that high. So,、uh, according to this tendency, I believe that in the next ten or twenty years, probably chess would become even more popular. Yeah. In the UK, where I'm at the moment,、um, I feel that the Queen's Gambit in the past year made a, a big bang for chess and made it a lot more popular, especially along,、um, among women. Did did was the Queen's Gambit something that created like a boom in in China as well, or have you, for example, watched it? Yeah, definitely. And while you're talking about this, actually. Uh, there is a publisher in China bought the、uh, right to translate this book, not the TV series, but the book into Chinese. And I was advisor for this book translation, so I know very well not only the the TV series but also the book. Uh, so in general, I thought that it is a great、um, TV production to promote chess, and、uh, it could easily see that the Um, the whole production team did a lot of preparation, pre- preparation to study chess, to skill, uh, study chess、um, skills, rules, and also history to make this、um, TV more like、uh, something could happen in the real world. And、uh, also, I think the. The topics that contains in this TV production, let's say,、uh, the gender issue, the 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 fashions, and also the growing up stories, all these are actually jumping out of the chess world. It's more like a、um, a general topic that people could brought a lot of public discussions, which I. Is also the reason I like this movie ma- more because I feel like nowadays if you, uh, if you somehow produce a movie that only focusing on a specific field, that is losing the general interest because something you talked is too deep and too professional. Naturally, you would lose some readers who are not interested about this part. But this the Queen's Gambit is、um, basically could suit.、Uh, The people that came in from diff- come from different background, with different age, with different interests.、Uh, for example,、um, some of my friends they told me they don't know chess, they're not interested about chess, but they just feel like the 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 dress code from Bass is just like、um, you know. They 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 pay, they are very interested about this, and also there are people who told me like this is a very good gender topic TV series to watch about, and also more friends told me they didn't know. Okay, who doesn't know chess at all? They told me okay. So after this movie, I realized how you look like when you play chess. So actually, um. You know, just like people could approach in different perspectives while watching this movie. Yeah, I have one final question to conclude because we're nearly at the end today, talking about these gender issues. So the FIDE declared twenty twenty two the year of the women in chess, and they're planning a range of events、um, to include female participation and f- I don't know, like workshops on mental strength. This podcast is part of the series. Is there anything you could think of that you would like to see from FIDE to support women in chess, either women that are already in chess, or maybe to make it more attractive to new people to join? Um. Well, I think first of all, FIDE already did a lot to improve women's chess. Um, in professional level, for example, they changed the format, and in in the um. Intermediate level, they also try to create some projects to encourage more girls to participate into chess. And also, I'm very happy to see that we're going to have this Women's Year in chess. I felt that it's really a great milestone in the chess history for female chess players. And I believe that this is not the 
the how to say this is not the completion of、uh, women's chess, but it's a starting point of women's chess. And there are a lot more things that we could explore in the future, and could do, and could collaborate with other institutions, bring more resources to pay attention to women's chess and see.、Um, How to launch more interesting projects? How to encourage more,、uh, let's say, women to get involved into the chess world? I talk about women, not girls, because for girls, maybe we're thinking about we could try to、um, cultivate more strong girl players, try to encourage them keep going on chess, do not quit at the young age. But if we're talking about women in chess. We could、uh, try to approach chess in a different perspective. Not talking about professional chess to become a strong chess player, but see, okay, so chess can represent what kind of functions in chess. For example, try to,、um, let me see how to say in English. Just、um, to see what. Uh, uh, The particular group needs if they wanted to approach chess as an intellectual sport. Of okay, so I believe it's a good alternative compared to video games or maybe other things, right? Or maybe pokers, right? So I mean, it's not a bad alternative at this. I'm not saying the others is not good, but it's just an additional option. And if one day want to change something, and if some group wants to approach it as a way to um to Cultivate a tougher mindset. I guess it's also a good way, right? Or maybe just simply you you wanted to refresh your mind from the work you're doing. I think that's also a good leisure option. So I think that in this perspective, we also could try to find more things to bring women in. Because if we're talking about sports, some sports which needs more physical energy. So women, of course, we can see that we're. Uh, less advantage than that, right? But chess is something that if we only compete for fun, doesn't see、uh, there is any obstacle or there is any、um, let's say this difficult point to stop women step in. Yeah, it's a it's a great sport not only for the professionals but also for for leisure and a lot of the amateur and club players. And we're really hoping to bring more women in. Well, thank you very much on that, Ifan. I think that's the end of our podcast already. Thank you so much for being with us today. It was an absolute honor and pleasure to have you here. Great, thank you, Lily. Hello, chess friends. This is Michael. I am the regular host of the German Schachgeflüster podcast. Thanks a lot to Lily for this wonderful interview, and also to Fide for our podcast cooperation. It was really an honor to have world's number one Hui Fan as a guest. I'm sure that with her chess results and also with her personality, she inspires many women and girls to play chess, and that's of course one of the most important goals of this podcast series. Our next interview guest will be Susan Namangale. Susan is the president of the Chess Association of Malawi in Africa, and also a FIDE arbiter and trainer. Please don't forget to subscribe to the FIDE podcast so that you won't miss the next episodes. Thank you for listening, and see you soon.